what is up risk takers welcome to the kill piece strategy i am pete i am a top player in risk global domination the daily release on youtube i'm doing weekday streams on twitch if you are interested in getting better at the game of risk i invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me for today's episode we're going to be playing a three player classic fix game because we start with one bot i'm in the third position playing as red settings for today's game uh, world domination on classic auto setup medium bot fixed cards alliances on fog blizzards portals are off and the bot activity is automated so some skills we're going to have to practice this game are um we are going to have to figure out how to negotiate with our other two opponents one of whom has the turn one australia um i'm last to act of the players and then the magenta bot acts after me okay so black is aggressively pummeling is black trying to move into south america or is black trying to take europe we don't actually know and they closed the line for me that was dumb okay well i have been saying that i wanted to improve my three-player game so how do I put myself in a situation where Black and I aren't horrible enemies this entire game? Ugh, I hate this open. I need to work with Black, otherwise we're both going to kill each other. And then White just wins. So balance is a very important thing to consider. With three players, it's the most important thing to consider. All right, let's see what type of player Black is. And if he is the type of player who insists that we both die, then so be it. So I am in South America, but so is he. So if he's smart enough to let me leave, that would be the ideal scenario. Either I want to take South America, or I want to move my troops out of South America, depending on what the black player does. A white player is only going to have one move, which is to expand out of Australia. They got it turn one, which is excellent. But of course, that initial move where I offered the alliance to black and it was declined. Um, my ability to talk to this guy is limited. White rolls 4v2, so they're not very good. White rolls unnecessary 4v2 is more to the point. Okay, let's see what black does. I don't know where they're going yet. And I would love to work with this guy if possible. <sighs> we shall see, though. All right, he is slamming my troops. I'm at 24 to his 31. And that will just put the distance between both of us and white even further and further apart. All right, black leaves me with no options. There's nothing I can do. As far as I can tell, it doesn't just kill us both. If he takes Africa and gives me South America, he can take it. Maybe I move my troops into North America. I will have to play it, I suppose. I'm running out of material very quickly. Looks like Magenta Bot is working on Europe. Yes. Okay, that could be good for me. If Magenta Bot takes a strong Europe. That would cause problems. Once Magenta Bot finishes taking Europe, it could cause problems for the players in that sphere of influence. But what I need is I need black player to remove this material from South America so I can have a bonus. And hopefully we have stable borders 
on the Brazil North Africa corridor. Maybe I get lucky with the cards. All right, turn three, let's see what black does. I really don't want us killing each other while white just steals the game for free. Black is being muy, muy cunty, though. So far. <laughs> well, but this is the thing, right? In three players. So if Black wants to be a bad neighbor to me, and I have no choice, then we both die and White wins. My, my entire thinking in this scenario is to be as passive as possible and stack and hope that Black switches his attention to paying attention to White because White continues to get stronger and will let me catch up. And I know all of that is a big if though. So we shall see. Moves in, right? I see him highlighting that he moves in. That is hitting my stack. Oh God. All right. So I get a lot of questions, folks, about what could I do? I just, my, my opponents seem to keep hitting me. What can I do to stop this? Sometimes I don't think there's anything you can do. See, but insisting on South America, if you were smart, if you were a good player, um, you could insist on South America by leaving me a path out. So here's what could have, here's what uh, Black could have done on his turn. Instead of moving in, um, if he moved the four into Brazil and let me have a path out into North America, I would have taken it. <clears throat> and then he would get South America without having to roll a 14 or now 17 stack. If he sets, if he's a 10 set on three and rolls my 17, he's going to give the game to White and ruin both of our games for sure. And of course, white does. I have a joker, so I have a 10 set on three. Let's see if he rolls me. Or let's see if he's smart and he lets me out. I would hit first lol next game. Yeah, possible. But he didn't accept the alliance. He was outright targeting you. I hopefully match cards before him. Yeah, well, we both still die in that game. The outright targeting thing is a thing that is possible. But in that scenario, we both lose. Sometimes there's a no win scenario. <laughs> he's not going to roll it yet. Maybe he lets it out. No, he's going to roll it. He is going to roll it. I lose this game, folks. Wow. What a bad game. <laughs> Poof face killer. Thank you. How many fingers can you fit? Can I fit where? Thank you so much for the resub, dude. <clears throat> no surprise. Black's going to set, put the cards on the 14. He's going to roll it. He's just building the suspense. What are you doing? <sighs> and he gets perfect dice. This is why I can't play with people. <laughs> Look at the luck on this guy. Insane luck. Wins is 6v5. Well, there's only one thing to do in this scenario, folks.
All right. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh, I need a minute to recombobulate my... No, no, he, he wasted uh, eh, only 10 minutes of my time. What is up, risk takers? Welcome to Kill Pete Strategy. I am Pete. I am a top player in risk global domination. I have a daily release on YouTube. I'm doing weekday streams on Twitch for the winter. If you are interested in getting better at the game of risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me. What we're doing today is another episode of Fixed Friday. We have a six player game, which is what I wanted. And we're in the last position, which is usually pretty good. Uh, settings for the series, world domination on classic map, auto setup, 60 second turn, expert neutral bot. We don't start with any, thankfully. The real six player game, fixed cards, balance blitz dice with alliances on, fog blizzards and portals are off. I'm in the last position, in position one. Magenta players, Benjamin Singh from my favorite place of Singapore. Rolling a 4v3, which is dumb. When he can just roll an 8v3 instead. In position two, the red player is Amon Temple from the United States of America. In position three, the white player, Michelle Fukushima, also from USA. In position four, Benjamin, 82. Also from USA, playing as Orange. In position five, we've Bill Olson, bunch of Americans, playing as Black. And finally, myself, this is Bird Blintz from Bangladesh. Um, in a little bit of camo, and it looks like I have a lot of material in Northern Asia. So this isn't an ideal spawn. We're going to want to figure out what direction to move that material into. My guess would be the Europe position, but the North America position is always an option as well. And I'd rather be in North America than just about anywhere else. But we have to basically see what everyone else is going to do. We're going to get the six troops at the beginning, which is good. Um, and see what we can do with it. Yeah, so it looks like red wants to be in NA, which is fine by me. Red is going to fortify that two in there. Predicted that. Okay, what does white do? White goes for SA, I bet. White adds and takes off America. I'm trying to guess and get a sense of what all of our opponents want, what type of players they are. So far, it looks like on my turn, I'm going to go for the Europe position. So I'm going to add to my four, go take, maybe take, take. I'm going to pull my three in, and then I'll have a four on the Ural position that I'm going to add as well. Yes, predicted white successfully. White is going to attack the three. No, they're going to spend some material. That just delays the inevitable. All right. Hey, thank you, Mustang 147 with the cheers. Thank you so much for the bitties. All right, orange player. Does orange contest? Orange could do a bunch of things. Orange could either add and contest in Australia, or orange could add to their, it looks like they add to the Africa position. Okay. Looks like Orange is going to take Africa and then move that two in. No! They are contesting me for Europe. Okay, I can pivot to Africa, perhaps. But Black's going to take Africa. It's Black has a five and a three that can only move this way. And a two in Africa. It looks like Africa is black. All right, so we have spheres of influence. So magenta is going to take Australia. Black is going to take Africa. White is going to take South America. Red is going to take North America. And orange is going to take Europe. Where does that leave the old Peatman? That leaves the old Peatman deceased. Shit. Okay, I actually get some value out of the Australian. And I have more troops in Europe than Orange. Not an ideal first turn, but my stack's bigger than his, so that's a good thing. We're going to see Magenta working on Australia with the cleanup. Still take a turn or two. This is why, this is a basically a terrible Australia start for Magenta, and they pooched it by unnecessarily slow rolling 
they could have had a four stack in Siam to reinforce in by now if they didn't do that wrong. Single stack in Asia, I don't think I'm going to single stack in Asia. That's not really my style, even though it's probably correct. Okay, what would red do here? Red is going to connect his three into North America. And he's going to do it slowly. I'm going to throw some push-ups down for you now. I missed it. Not push-ups, uh, some lifters. While we wait. Yeah, orange is in a lousy spot for sure. What the hell? You need bigger weights? Yeah, I'm working up to it. Okay, so what does white do? White adds to a seven. <clears throat> white adds to a six. Does he hit the three? It's the two. Okay, he takes a perfect roll. White also is on the slow claim to a plus two. So because both magenta and white are taking a while to take their bonus, that will give me an opportunity to take cards and stack now here is where i offer the alliance to orange because we don't need to kill each other ideally in a perfect world we don't need to kill each other love the shirt when will there be kill pete merch it's in the works okay orange says i but i want it though Okay. Except, so at least we can talk to each other. Look, two players fighting for Europe is dumb as shit. We're both going to kill each other. Perhaps I back off and do the single stack in Asia plan. Okay. Black adds to Venezuela and makes two attacks. Essentially giving the bonus to white next turn. White says, thanks. Yep. Okay. I'm also going to show some good faith to white. Might as well ally up with everyone now. Okay, well, my stack is much larger than oranges, and it's all in Europe. I'll give orange a chance to leave, I guess. White says, thanks, good. What I wanted. Uh, Magenta should not add any troops to Siam. I don't know what he's doing. Magenta is definitely a noob. Go for Australia, yeah, potentially. Potentially, it looks like, uh, I hate Australia, though. I just basically don't want to mess with uh, this third of the board, usually in the open. <laughs> Sick of Pete. Go for a second under 10 minute game. Well, I would definitely try and win this one. I mean, I tried to win the last one, but I lost immediately. That happens. You need a shirt with Pete's head and the Reginald Tumulus. Yes. I can draw shapes. Yeah, dude. We're drawing shapes now on the show. That's what we're doing. All right. Red continuing to work on North America. Red's North America is going to be soft, man. OK. 
Okay, connect so we can pull his three from Kamchatka into North America. Yep. All right, he's got lines to take it because we're expecting white to go take and take now. Anyway, I can tell off the bat, since I just joined in, if it's <coughs> if it's fixed or progressive. The way you would tell is, I have a single large position, and it is turn two, um, and I would never do that in classic progressive. So it is a fixed game, right? I, would, I wouldn't want to lose my exteriors, ideally. Yeah, so as expected, white takes South America on the third turn. What do we see orange do now? And then he starts giving me orders. Sure, I'd love to do exactly what you tell me. Well, yeah, there's no icon or indicator. No, the icon or indicator is here in the little dice up in the corner. It says uh, fixed card bonus. Okay, walks up, walks up. Does he block NA instead? Yes, move out. Please move out. Please move out. Please move out. I love you. Okay, now we're in good shape. Because now we have a slow claim to Europe. Black takes Africa. Didn't ally me? Didn't accept. Okay. Slow claim to Europe it is. We don't take it yet. We take it when we have a set. Sit in the middle of Europe. No, no set yet. Okay. Yeah, the other way is, so the other way to know if it's fixed or progressive is if you look in the card menu, see on the right-hand side here, it says uh, infantry cavalry worth something. Progressive would show the troop progression, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on. That is true. Okay. What a soft Australia. Magenta took so long to take Australia on the fourth turn that they're down to 13 troops. If someone was feeling frisky, they could eat Magenta for their cards. Black could interrupt them. Right, black could stack on the four. He's going to get one, two, three, four, five, six next turn. Four turns into a 10. Maybe he goes in. I don't think he does, but it's a possibility. <laughs> Take Orange's cap, yes. <laughs> why do you do four dice instead of three on the Blitz Slider? I hate using the Blitz Slider. So if you're asking me why I have to use the Blitz Slider at all, it's begrudgingly. Yeah, red's going to take Mexico and then reinforce up to the three. No. He would like to take North America, but he doesn't have it. What does white do? White has to add to his exterior. White kills magenta. Lol. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That is why you don't take... He misses the kill. So who gets it? Orange gets the kill on Magenta. That's going to supercharge Orange's game. White takes the position, but Orange takes the kill on Magenta now. Gets four cards, trades in. Watch him lose the 5v2. Now he gets it. That is a kill! Hey, Cake ZP, just found the YouTube channel a month ago. Enjoy your content. Started playing a couple days ago. Keep up the grind. Thank you, man. So glad you enjoy. All right. Maje uh, Orange now has a 10 set. Maybe he punches red hard and then feeds me red's kill. It's it all in Greenland. This is another reason why I did not open the Iceland territory. I do not want Orange to be able to come back. I want him to go this way instead. 
right? He just stacks on Iceland. Great. What does black do? Black hits this three, I think, or maybe gets an easy take on orange. He gets a bad set. Okay, red says we need to be allies. Attack orange. Yeah, no shit. You are in a desperate position. Okay, does black interrupt white? No, he hits the three. All right, so if I had cards, I could maybe think to kill red. But I do not, so given that, I continue the slow claim for Europe. And I have a eight set. I have an eight set on four, so I will trade that in and take the bonus next turn. I hope to be good neighbors with Black, who isn't my ally. Red's in big trouble if they don't set. Orange could kill him. So Orange is going to set, and then they can kill Red and take five cards. Now, you misunderstand my answer to you, John. When you uh, say when you use it, I did four dice and I can still lose two troops. But the, yeah, so what, what I'm saying to you is I hate using the blitz slider. So I don't want to talk about it or think about it or min-max it or I'm begrudgingly using it. Ooh, ooh, unexpected, unexpected. He's manual rolling oranges stack. And he set in to do it. Unexpected play. Yeah, Orange doesn't like that. Huh. That's really good for me. But of course, White having two plus twos is also bad news, baseball. I think I get top three in this game. I think Orange and Red are going to kill each other. When was the last time you played an actual board game version of Risk? A couple months ago. I played it like I, I've, I've historically played board game Risk. Um, a couple times a year with my buddies. Okay, what do we see orange do? Do we see orange set stack on the 20? Eliminate red for one card? I think if I was orange, I would eliminate red here. Even though it's not all that profitable. Because the guy showing the willingness to manual you, yeah, the elim, we have to get rid of this guy, right? Or he just, he just pops the stack. He sets Red up. Red didn't even take another card. So Red's dead. Red is losing this game. Andre says, I'm your buddy who never played. Yeah, well, you gotta make, you gotta make your way. Hey, okay, does black go bad neighbor to white? I don't think so. I think black goes bad neighbor to me, to be perfectly honest. Okay, I do the uh, Europe turtle strat. So I'm gonna go take, take. And then I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna have a soft guard in the middle, not threatening black. But if black um, opens any of the Europe borders, then it releases the 26 stack to go out. So it's a threat guard, not, it's a soft, soft guard threat guard rather than a, a hard shell. And I prefer this, the rationale folks, in case you, you are new to this kind of thinking. Um, so Europe is a plus five and if a player advances into you on either of these fronts and they're guarded, you lose whatever stack you're guarding. And black has enough to break me if I had threes, fours, fives on any of these positions. Um, so I'm letting him break me if he wants to, which does a couple of things. It shows you who's your friend and who's your enemy. Um, and it also, when the break inevitably happens... You don't lose a guard stack. You just lose the potential future generations. You lose five fictitious troops instead of what, however many actual troops, which is a significant difference. 
All right, we see a bot out from red. We are now top four. Trying to catch the Twitch stream. Do you have a schedule? You go by no caked. I tried to do that, and it turned out that I couldn't stick to any sort of schedule that I promised, and it made it like really difficult for me to keep my word. Does white break me? No, he doesn't. White's okay. So in lieu of a schedule, I'm uh, I'm trying to be as productive as I can. I try and stream every day if I can, but uh, as far as when, it's tough tough to say. Hey, Mayo Nater, first time ever catching the stream, been enjoying the videos. Welcome. Thank you so much. I feel so blessed that you guys uh, are willing to support me, and that you find value in spending time with me in this way. I'm a very lucky man. You guys make me feel great, so thank you. We see a break by Black. He is not afraid of that 26 stat. Black wants to be a homie? Ah, I can dig it. I can dig that. I don't have to do anything. Do the same thing. Don't threaten orange. Don't need to guard any more in Iceland. Again, the same rationale really holds. That four sends the message that I would like to guard my bonus in case the 26. But important difference with Iceland is the, the, the if Iceland gets broken, the 33 is not available to counterattack. So I'm relying on Orange, who did leave the bonus earlier in the game, to be cool with me and to advance into North America, taking a bonus of his own. But we'll see. Super Kausau. Kausox. That's a tough one to say. Uh, hi, Pete and Chad. I have a question. When a player goes to bot, you immediately finish the match above him. I'm not sure if it works that way. Okay, so... Um, if the bot is neutral, you have to wait 10 minutes and then it, there's a little MIA button. So I think we might see this player, see how he's offline. We might see him go MIA, but I think if it's um, automated, no, it is neutral. Okay. So we're going to wait 10 minutes for the red player. And then you're going to see MIA. And at that point he can't return and his placement is locked at whatever placement. Orange is going to break. You think he might? Yeah, he might. That's definitely why I didn't put any more troops in Iceland. He's lined up to break, but he's not breaking. Good. This is good. I have the best bonus. Now I just have to let people not break me, which is a big if. We'll see if they let me uh, pull ahead. Right now I'm in third place. Uh, white is at 49 troops. Black is at 50, and I'm at 43. Uh, uh, orange, I'm actually in the weak, I'm the weakest player. Okay. Weakest player, but I'm holding the best bonus. I can let this board state continue for a while. Now we are tied up for the lead. Derptastic. Just like in chess, where they have famous strategies, i.e. the Queen's Gambit, do you ever see the same occurring in your risk? Oh, all the time. Um, we should probably codify some of that i should start giving it names like well i i think champ kind of has so so what i am doing in this game is the european turtle strategy um and the idea is that you turtle hunker down in the middle of europe rather than guarding the three entries and as i explained before this is such that you lose um, future troops when broken, but you don't lose guard stacks. Hi. All right, so we, we have some consultation. From the original Schmopus man, the key strategic genius behind the Kill Pete strategy, this is Reginald Schmopus Boy Jeej, the developer of the finest, finest flummox meat in all of Ontario, Canada and maybe even the entire world. 
you have any strats for me, Mr. Schmopus man? He says, no, I want my fucking dinner. <laughs> you could only give one piece of advice to a new player. What would it be? What's the most important lesson of all lessons? Um, your instincts are probably bad. And go into this a lot. Um, so what I mean by your instincts are probably bad is humans have a terrible intuition with probability and so much of risks core, um, technical strategies are probabilistic. So you have to first, in order to play the technical aspect of the game, well, you have to understand what your odds are of any given play in order to make an informed decision. Informed decision-making is key. So we can make decisions on intuition, how something feels. But the problem with that is we happen to be really bad with numbers and feelings. They don't really connect so well. Um, the rational part of the human brain and the emotional part um, do not see eye to eye all the time. So in order to make the correct decision in context, um, the best thing you can do is give yourself as objective um, data as possible. And the only way to do that is to play a ton, um, you know, watch a bunch of content. There's a ton of great people making risk content now, way, way, way more than ever before. So that you got lots of options. Um, but yeah, that's my key piece of advice to any newer player is take your emotions off the table and try and look at your game as objectively and logically and rationally as possible. And don't necessarily assume that you did something right when you win and that you did something wrong when you lose. Neither are true. It's a lot more likely that um, the truth is somewhere in the middle. There, that's my, uh, he says, oh, I know my instincts are bad. <laughs> hey, Gold, how are you, buddy? I miss you too. Yes, and don't forget to turn off the animations. This is true. All right, looks like Orange is cocking his gun. 41 stack in Siberia. That gun is locked and loaded. What are we going to see him do with it? Black is letting me hold. White is letting me hold. I don't think orange suddenly goes bad neighbor to me now. You think he's lined up to smack white in Australia? That's a crazy play, right? Blowing through 34 troops to get a plus two. That's a crazy play. I don't think orange does that because it would just be so terrible. Okay. And, and check it out, guys. We just see... The red player go MIA. So that's 10 minutes. Red player is now a bot. We are in a four player game. We finished top four. So he, his placement is now locked at where he finished. I'm going to sit with a 10 stack exterior guard and a 58 stack turtle. Now I can expand out just a touch. Just a touch. I'm happy with this board and I can slowly get takes in North America without pissing anyone off. Hopefully. Until I hold 12 territories, then I'll start generating an extra troop. I assume he's good. I assume he was good enough to not get us both killed in the early game. <laughs> Didn't say good, good. Just good enough to not get us both killed. So why would he all of a sudden get himself killed now? Right? But again, we shall see. You never know. Right? People can play unpredictably. So far, I've predicted a lot of this game which I'm happy with Attila to the max after following YouTube for the past two years. It's crazy to catch you live for the first time. Where have you not been on Twitch? What's up Attila two years. It is awesome to see how far the show has come. Thank you, man. Been there the whole way, huh? Appreciate you. Thank you for the prime. That's fantastic, man. You know how crazy it is for me to like parse that I've been doing this for two years. Actually, like two and a half. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun. Maybe we'll go into Afghanistan to pressure black into breaking you. 
No, he wants. Can't tell what he wants. <laughs> I can't tell what he wants. I think he just wants to be out of the way. Orange is not happy about his situation. I need to continue to show good faith to Orin. So. What I think I do. Is I retreat. I'm going to let him have North America if he wants it. I don't really want to start a war with the orange player. So you see what I do, guys. Is I, I, I miss my fortify here because I'm pulling back from... Greenland to Iceland, because if Orange wants to take North America, he can. It would be a very expensive take. He has to push through 18 of the Redbots material, but that number is only getting larger. Every turn, that's going to go up by three. So the time to take North America is yesterday, if I was Orange. All right, he sets in with a 10 set. Been watching since the lockdown days in Ontario. Crazy, man. Yeah, when there was nothing to do. But play Risk, apparently, on my phone. And he pivots back. Now he's in Japan. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right. Black gets a 10 set. But MIA means no more troops. Oh, you might be right. You might be right. MIA probably does mean no more troops. Uh, Gaslight for life would like to know, could you have shown Orange uh, good faith by taking some red territory? I could have. I could have been nicer. Um, but I am 20 troops ahead. So I don't think I need to... Be too nice. Okay, we do finally see a break from Black. Black would like to keep my lead somewhat mitigated. So because I can't talk to this guy, I'm going to threaten a little bit. But I'm obviously not going to roll it. Because there's no reason to roll a 3 into a 39. Because dice rolls and risks go uh, pairs, uh, w winning pairs. So it's max is three versus two defender. Defender wins in a tie, right? Um, so when you're rolling three, you have to hold one back. So you're actually rolling two into a two, which eliminates the attacker's advantage. I want to see if black opens me again. And the second time I'm going to manual him. Okay? So if black decides to go for the break again. Whoa. White. Punches Orange. Orange is not happy about that. Okay, so if Black goes for a break again, my way to reciprocate that is I move with my stack and I will manual just once to say, stop it. I don't like being threatened. I don't like being broken. And we're going to kill it. We're going to kill ourselves. All right, does Orange go suicide into, into white? By opening my 67, black player has as much to lose as me. I'm also holding a set here. So I do have a 10 set up the pike. Thank you, JBL865 for the prime sub. Thank you so much. Black did it because he doesn't want to open the 53. I think opening white's 53 is, is less scary than opening my 67. And breaking me. He breaks me again. Yes, he breaks me again. So this turn I send one manual into him. If he does it a third time, I'll start sending more.
And I can't ally again. Another reason why we need alliance requests to expire. Say, oops, don't do it again. He's going to do it again. And I have a joker again. Let's see if he does it a third time. And then I will fuck his face off, yeah. <laughs> we'll see if he does it a third time. Is this the same black player helping the same white player like last game? I don't think so. It's just a fun coincidence. What do you guys think? You think he breaks me one more time? I think he does. I think he breaks me one more time. The answer is yes. Okay, now I guard out. So now it's mutually assured destruction. If he wants to roll me, he can make us both lose. Which he still might do. Sometimes in a bad neighbor scenario, um, your opponent's decisions. Um, so this is, I've basically, let's use a poker analogy. So he breaks me, which is a raid. And then I take it back and I don't hit him, which is a check. And then he breaks me, which is another raise. And then I hit him back and I manual roll him with just a slight raise. Then he hits me a third time, which is a re-raise. And now I'm guarding out, which is another check because I'm not actually hitting him. I'm just insisting on guarding. And now we see number four. Does he re-raise again? Does he hit a big stack? He might, man. Let's see it. You think I'm tilted? I don't think I'm tilted. I think maybe he was just insisting that I guard properly, which is fine. Yeah, he doesn't hit a big stack. And we're all tied up, right? Me, white, and black, all tied up. He will just wait. Maybe. I've seen P tilted. This isn't it. You'll know it when you see it. No, I'm not tilted. I, you can't actually fault a person for breaking you um, in fixed, right? This is a lesson I learned from Phil. Um, I Maybe not learned from Phil, but this is a lesson Phil put the best way possible. He's like, listen, you have to expect that other people are also trying to win the game. So at some point you're going to get broken, right? It's not like a personal slight. Um. It's what has to happen in the game to make it end. Pete's not tilted. He's calculated. If he's going to lose, he might as well take the person and take him down with him. Yeah, well, amen. No, don't get it. Don't get it wrong, guys. Sometimes I'm tilted. <laughs> Sometimes I'm tilted. But uh, you can break my bonus a bunch at this stage of the game. I'm still in second place, so my feelings are not hurt. I don't need to throw this game. Okay, am I going to trade with blue, or does blue finally break? Nah, blue is messing with white, which is great. I wonder if hitting Greenland shows uh, friendly good faith to orange, um, such that you would want me to trade with them there? I was a little tilted from the last match, yeah. It's too bad it didn't go. You know what? Maybe I will put it on YouTube. Um, and then we'll, we'll transition right into this game because people like to see me lose from time to time. Um, and that game was just a perfect example 
of a no-win scenario. Sometimes you are put into a scenario where there is nothing you can do and your opponents kill you. Um, and that's the way it was, that game. So, the way the old cookie crumbles, ladies and gentlemen. Can't win them all, right? So the other problem with uh, switching from the interior turtle to the hard guard is now that I'm guarding outside, the pressure between me and with a symmetrical guard to black, the pressure between me and black is building. And he already broke me a couple of times. So the assumption could be that we're not friendly. So at some point, maybe this cold war goes hot and we both kill each other still. I tried to negotiate with him, right? I tried to send the alliance. Orange hit an eight stack of white. Interesting. Brandon, fan dragon. What's the best move for orange in this situation? Do nothing. Orange is in a winning position. Orange doesn't have to do anything. Oh, sorry, orange. I thought you meant white. What's the best thing to do for orange? Unfortunately, is what he's doing. Hang out in Asia and take single cards. Um... One topping pizza. What's the topping? Thank you for the prime sub, man. How are you? So Pete, how did you get into streaming and making videos? This, the origin story of the Kill Pete strategy. Um, so as someone said earlier, uh, pandemic times, I'm sitting away pecking on my phone and this risk game because there's literally nothing else to do. And uh, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm a little bit better at this than I realized. I've been playing Risk my whole life off and on, right? And uh, I was meditating on my balcony. I had the idea, it's all right, I'll shoot, I'll shoot a couple videos of myself playing this game. And nothing really happened. It kind of petered out a bit. Um, I did a, a novice G GM run that I actually never finished. Um, and then... Around January of 2021, uh, I competed in my first free-for-all tournament on the server. Um, I followed a link on Reddit that Sterling posted, and I came in second in the world. Um, and then those tournament videos, uh, coupled with my finish, I, I began posting religiously daily. And Bob's your uncle, right? I haven't stopped. Um, for, for more than two years, posting daily. And then, of course, in the summer, um, the YouTube algorithm blessed me, and I had, you know, incredible success with uh, <laughs> that one tournament vi video from a year later. It's also Classic Fix with Blizzards. That game I won. It was round one. It's got a little bit of everything, right? It's got, uh, got Reggie makes an appearance. It's a tournament video, so I'm super intense. I win the game. Um, it's my first stream on Twitch that gets over 100 viewers. So I was so hype, so excited that so many people wanted to watch Risk. Um, the subs and bits were going crazy and my alert sounds were way too loud. But uh, you know what? We've learned a little bit since then. And we keep trying to make the show a little bit better if we can. I'm so, so grateful to all of you for watching. I love it. I love hanging out with you guys in this way. It's a weird sort of connection, right? It mostly goes one way, but um, I know I can feel that I add value to your day in, in whatever little way I do, right? With entertainment. Um, and that's really nice to, to be able to 
make your day a little bit better while also making my day a little bit better. I think that's win-win, um, which is something that I really, it's a principle I live by. It's a principle I go for. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, Orn should have taken North America. They should have rolled those 18 troops by now instead of messing around. They should have have, have a bonus. Now they're a distant third, right? Oh, Chad, the true Chad with the gift subs. Thank you. C Carter, 1996, five gift subs. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate you. And thank you, Therbio. Hey, Philly's here. Hey, Phil, I was just talking about you. Maybe you can articulate your point uh, better than, than I did. Um, you said something to the effect of um, you have to expect that your opponents are trying to win the game too and not be surprised when they hit you. But uh, you probably you probably said it better than I did. True Blade. Uh, found Pete around December, started playing Rust because of it. Congrats on the dice. Yes. And Phil is here too. Phil is okay too. Yeah. One of the best guys in the world. Yeah, somebody gave me my dice, folks. How sweet is that? J Lux. What would threatening the large stack in Southern Europe to reciprocate their earlier advance have done? Like immediately after you broke you. So it's, the threat is, um, so in this situation, J Lux is asking, uh, after the second time black broke and my stack was here and I manual rolled, um, I, I retook and manual rolled what that threat means is, Hey, I could hit you and I could kill us both right now. So it's a, it's kind of a bluff, right? It's like, you're going to do it again. All right, this is what Orn should have done multiple turns ago. But he still doesn't quite take the bonus. Interesting. All right, Pete, heading to bed. Good night, Andre. The arrows are new. Yeah, they are. I'm working on improving the content, like I said. Trying my best to make the best show I can make for you guys. Why doesn't he take the kill? Well, he should take it now. Absolutely take it now. And I think I'm in the lead. Also kind of nice. The old Peatman finally takes the lead. So with a hundred stack, white has 159 of 157, black player at 143, and orange at 92 troops. All right, so Phil, in his own words, says, basically the thought is, you will be invaded. You are playing a war game and people are trying to win. So they believe they're doing the right thing for their game when they break you or hit you. The question you should ask yourself, assuming you want to win, <laughs> is what is my highest percentage move this turn to win the game? Well put. And if any of you guys do not know, Risky Film makes a video on Twitch and YouTube. Twitch.tv slash Risky Phil. Go check him out. He is one of my very, very favorite people. And I love, I love your show, Phil. You're awesome, dude. Pete, you should do a weather forecast where you analyze sent in positions to evaluate what you would have done in that situation. I don't know why Orange isn't taking the bonus. <laughs> I'm so confused about what Orange is up to, man. Patience is uncanny. I don't get it. I think Phil has done, Phil has gone through so many reps like me, right? We're about the same. We're almost exactly the same age. And um, when you do something this long and you see so many iterations of it, um, it's easier to be dispassionate about the outcome because most scenarios aren't new. Most scenarios are ones that you've seen before, you're familiar with, you're comfortable with, and... Given that, you'll know you'll make it through the other side. Maybe you win, maybe you lose. But if you have a more, a larger data set, it's more representative. That larger, more data is better data. 
Is there a reason White isn't taking the kill? I don't understand what's happening. At this point, I would take that seven for one card. Absolutely. But there's a better reason why White doesn't take. So if White takes the seven, takes the one card, now he's sitting here with 57. Does he pull back or does he allow Orange to take the bonus for free? Right? What White is basically doing is White is asking Orange to hit the seven. Um, to get his last card to guard North America, and then Orange can start catching up in terms of troops, but it's going to take a long time. I'm still neck and neck with White. Holy shit! Classic Fix is a boring game. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on psychologically that we don't at first have access to. Um, and that's, again, those iterations, right? When you go through more and more and more steps, um, you see the patterns, the underlying deeper patterns behind the game. Um, and right now I'm in a winning position. So all I need to do is nothing and wait and see if anyone tries to interrupt me. All right. So black's going to start instigating with someone else. Now black's a bit of a shit disturber. Okay. Let's see how orange deals with black stirring the pot. Fine with me. Again, I don't have to do anything. Orange says go ham. Or uh, white says go ham. This is where YouTube's playback speed is key. Yeah. Yeah, because there's going to be a lot. This video is going to have a long stalemate middle. Black working with you against white might be his best option. Yeah, I think so. Is he? Because I figured out how to stop him from fucking with me. So now he's like, well, how do I end this game? <laughs> you can always quit. I have you guys to keep me company, right? This is the thing. People on YouTube want short videos. Classic Fix is not a short mode. Does he hit it? He doesn't. Classic Fix is not a short mode. I'm like, in order to win this game, I have to sit here for as long as it takes. Okay, finally, white takes, or orange takes North America. What's white's name? I think I played him before. Mitchell Fuku Michelle Fukushima. Classic P Prague 26 minutes video is prime. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like pumping out uh, World on Progressive videos. There's some of my very favorite things to do. If I was white, I'd slam that 57. Yeah, but that advantage is Pete. That puts me in a strong lead then. Oh, don't, don't guard there. What? Oh no. See, that's the wrong fortify. As soon as he took that, I would have depressurized this. Now I leave it as, but I, okay. Here's another principle, guys. So that fortify where he takes troops and he guards um, serves to say, I now have North America. I'm not going to let you backdoor me, except I've been cool with orange all, all game. If he didn't do that, I would have pulled the 11 into my big stack and we could have had a completely unguarded Greenland, Iceland corridor, but that's fine. The thing I definitely don't do here is add any troops to Iceland. All I need to do is stay put. And, and I'm fine with an 11-11 border. You should still pull Iceland in. So I, the reason I don't pull Iceland in now um, is because then I give him an advantage for no reason. Right? If he's first act and he gets the break, the Iceland break is bad because you can't counter attack. I'm not doing it in increments. It's, it's only 11 troops in the grand scheme of things. Right? It's not a significant guard stack. It just sends a message that says I'm trying to hold it. All right. Orange finally holds a bonus. Lucky, lucky. Now, does he start instigating? Orange is 12, so he's sneaking up. Yeah, he's in good shape. Well, he deserves it. He punched through a bunch of red. The Iceland break is what makes Europe so tough to guard without threatening. That's right. Europe's, a, Europe's not a great bonus. 
Other good fixed maps. Ooh, I like fixed. I like uh, Dracon Fortress. I like Stairs of Knowledge and Power. Uh, I like Troy. I like Japan a lot. Um, basically, any any reasonably like middle sized to small maps that force action. EU Advance is a great map for for fixed and progressive. Did you catch what I said? White is an expert. Okay, cool. Making the expert plays black orange. Sure. sure. I have the largest stack on the board, so. Pete strangely taught me to appreciate the 2209 or whatever Superman with way too many bonuses. Super map. I love that map, yeah. Hey, Pete, I hope you're having a great day. Back at you, Tommy Flagga 1990. I am, in fact, having a great day. EU Advance is probably the best all-around map. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Other than classic. You can't hate, can't hate on classic. It's the origin of the game. We might be here for a while, folks. Black is an intermediate. You know... People get around in this community, eh? Hey, thank you, Mayo Nature, for the pitties. Thank you so much. You don't like classic. What is it that you don't like? You just checked. You have a uh, a list. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Black is tired of sitting around with his thumb up his butt. And he's going to make some moves. Let us see. Does White try and preempt it? Maybe it's going into me. We don't know where the uh, 167 stack is going. I have a question I've been wanting to ask you for a long time. Yes, sir. Why am I playing under the Bhutan flag? Uh, because this flag has a dragon on it, and I am not a nationalist. Oh, white's trying to make black hit me for a card. You dirty fuck. Oh, shit. Would you look at that? What is the plan? Which is orange? It's 20 of my troops. What is the plan? I wonder why I did that. What do you guys think that move is about? Orange takes Australia. That's a dumb move. I think that gets orange killed by white. I think I just chill and clean up. Let everyone hit each other. Maybe go heads up with black. I think orange for sure slams. Uh, I, I think white for sure slams orange now. If you can free up that 67. Okay, black sets. Black is in the lead at 188 troops. I'm in second place at 179. I have, an, I have a cavalry trade. White player at 162 and orange player at 135. I'm in second place of four. We finally see some action. 
Let's go. All right. Uh, black player with 181 stack. Which way does it go? He kills me. Okay. He suicides into me and kills me. Okay. That is awfully, awfully disappointing. I'm asking both of these guys to give me third. You suck. What on earth was that? I mean, I should have rolled him just to ensure that we both die. Maybe one of these guys feels sympathetic to me and kills Black. See, the probability of me winning this game is zero. I hope Orange is cool to kill Black. I mean, I've been good to Orange the whole game after he left Europe. We'll see. Yeah, I might do some punchy punchy. If orange kills black, I will fucking help him in any way I possibly can this game. Please kill him. Please, please kill him. Please kill him. Please. Please kill him. You can kill me too. Just fucking kill this guy. I don't think he does because that gives white the win. I think black kills me and I get fourth. Damn it. He's not going to do it. Too bad. I just lose. And that's the game. Fuck. Bummer. I shouldn't even be taking cards. I can't believe that happens. Oh, that shit happens all the time. I definitely can believe that happened. Some people are terrible. <laughs> Hit me. Please. Fuck. All right, if I was black, I'd kill me again this turn. Why is it so terrible? It has to happen eventually because it doesn't win him the game. It just loses him the game. So he sat down to play a game and at some point he said, fuck it. But he's not, didn't say fuck it. He didn't leave. He just said, fuck it, I'm going to ruin Pete's game too. 
Right, so he's not playing to win, so he's not actually playing the same game. Why would you kill him? It's not worth it. Yeah, I know it's not worth it. Sometimes people help you just because they're they're on your side. There's all sorts of like telepathic communication going on with some players. Too bad won't, white won't let you take your back. I don't even want your back, man. I my only goal is to place ahead of black. There's zero hope in my mind of of winning this game. The fourth turn in a row, black should absolutely kill me. How am I alive? I'm not. Black and I are both dead. It is the game we play. Has he finally quit? You can still win, just park in Japan and wait it out. Oh, bro. <laughs> it was also terrible timing, Phil says, because Orange and White had a beef and then White attacked me. So Black said, hey, everyone's at war but me. I will suicide. <laughs> yes, and he bots now. Yes. Yep. Bill Olsen fucking sucks. <laughs> Loser. What a loser. Okay. Good job. Hope to never play you again. Dickhead. <laughs> Fuck. Unbelievable. Play something more on his level. What, like Candyland? <laughs> Stall for 10 minutes, yeah. I, I need to card skip for 10 minutes. I think White wins this game before that. I'll try. don't understand why orange is giving it to white orange doesn't know how to win like if you okay so here's what you do if you were orange right you definitely don't turtle in australia you pop through the kamchatka and you break break and hopefully you can use me to kind of stabilize like right now he's just playing for second Break, break. Looking good. Yeah, but you're not actually stopping him. <laughs> you're just giving him fucking two huge... Like, having the Americas, you can't fuck it. Three-point guard on a plus five and a plus two. Again, I should probably stop taking cards. All right, white needs to do something now. Or orange, rather, needs to do something now. Also, it is a guaranteed loss. Oh, 
All right, we had a 10 set. Only a 30 point difference between orange and white. Orange can still come back if he gets good dice. But I don't think he knows how to win. White laughs at his face. Pete, you have them exactly where you want them to spring your trap. <laughs> yeah. And by trap, you mean desperately try to not die. <laughs> White, who is in a winning position, tells me to attack orange for some reason. Fuck, man, I'm going to get fucking third. Or I'm going to fucking fourth. <sighs> Park in Madagascar. Yeah, I try to stay out of the way. Well, at least they're hitting stacks of each other. Come on, orange player. Now the gap is 60 troops. Don't think anyone's coming back. Why don't they just win? Yeah, because he doesn't know how, man. Not everybody knows what you know. All right, the stack's coming in, baby. Hit the nine. Orange is so passive. Oh, he's going to kill black. I get third. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, white. Attack or please tell me how I can win you the game. If you suicide into orange, you think white will give you second. Uh, I'm not going to suicide into orange. Orange orange gave me that placement for nothing. I'm going to help him. Fuck. And lose the 3v1. You saw me attack white. You saw me do it. <laughs> I did. What? What are you thumbs down? You saw me attack him. I fucking attacked him. You saw me do it. What do you want me to roll an 18 stack with my last fucking stack? You saw me help you. How on earth can he be upset about that? Oh, he wanted me to go this way. That's what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to go that way. It took me a while to figure out. Well, I have a joker. But white has way too many troops.
I can definitely not be mad at me for not helping him. <laughs> I helped you. We still die. <laughs> Better? Like, we're dead. We're fucking dead. So the way white wins right now, yes. The way white wins right, right now is he moves the 75 out. Um, and just cleans up the whole board. Orange could kill me. Or I kill orange? No, I'm not going to do it. I'll let white do it. If white wants to do it. Seventy five moves out. No, that's interior. He's he's going to let us catch up. Isn't this guy? Could you imagine? For second place, you might as well kill orange if you can. Yeah, but he, or just twice my troops. As to the 17 goes east through Kamchatka, maybe breaks Ukraine. Surprisingly, he doesn't break Venezuela. I don't think Orange is very good either. Do we see the Ukraine break? No. Orange kills me. I got third. That's a GG. But not yet. Doesn't kill me yet. I don't think he's a betrayer. I think he definitely, uh, he gave me that higher placement, so I can't complain. <laughs> he gave me that higher placement for nothing. We're both rats on a sinking ship at this point. Twenty-two v nineteen. Let's see if he's got it. Sixteen v thirteen. Oh, good roll, and that's the game. Third place. Disappointing. I'm really happy with how I played that game. Um. I can't point to any obvious errors. Um, I think the one thing I would say is the ability to reissue alliance requests, have them expire, and then um, after maybe a, a turn, a, a number of turns or something, um, so you could resend them. So I could have indicated to Black that we would have been much better as friends than as enemies, but he just kept it um, antagonizing. And then I tried to guard as best as I could, um, but that Cold War turned hot and there was no way for me to see a complete blindside suicide then quit play, which is just the most adorably stupid shit that you see happen from time to time. I love how Orange is still trying to win. Yeah, well, White needs to move. I have quite the speed, but he doesn't need it. This is such an overwhelming troop advantage. 
Your biggest mistake today was letting yourself get put in a game with idiots. <laughs> oh, well. Sometimes the cookie does not crumble your way, ladies and gentlemen. But sometimes it does. How can you rationalize Black's behavior, though? What is this psychologically? Um, so Black is a novice to beginner, right? Black is terrible. So it's difficult for... Here, you, you guys have to understand this, right? It's actually very difficult for me to empathically put myself in a player's mindset who's that basic. Um, because I've spent so much time thinking about this game. Um, so it's just as likely as anything else that his play was, fuck it, I'm going to go do something else now. <laughs> there should be some sort of intelligence threshold so this doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, it has to be. A, it's a piece of the game. It has to be. There's no way this game works without mutually assured destruction and the threat of mutually assured destruction. White hopefully has enough time to clean up this turn. Occam's razor might help simple plays are the best. Yeah, fuck it. I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I did. I had fun hanging out with you. I liked this game a lot, despite the fact that uh, one very silly move happened. It went on a while. Mostly curious to see the, the uh, ranks of my opponents. So pink was absolutely a novice. Red was a beginner. White was a beginner. Orange is an expert. And somehow, black was an intermediate. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you found some of it fun and entertaining, maybe even a little bit educational and informative. Uh, check me out, guys. I have an Instagram now. Um, Drew has got me to start posting on Instagram. Um, so we're, we're wiring up all the socials. Um, I can post a link to the chat, right? Now. It is kill Pete strategy, not the, it's kill Pete strategy on Instagram. Come check me out. I think we are just on the cusp of hundred followers. Um, also I'm starting my second channel. So we're going to have all of that information in the show notes on an ongoing basis. I hope you all enjoyed. Until next time, for all of you on the path to world domination, good games and good luck.